What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nathan and today we're going to look at a phase three edition vehicle that is super powerful but it chugs a ton of fuel. So without further ado, here is the International Paystar 5600 TS. Hope you guys really enjoy this. Please help support the channel by liking, subscribing, commenting, and please share the video as well. So let's get into this. Roll the tape. The International Paystar 5600 Twin Steer is a modernized variant of the 5070 with extra axles built for heavy duty hauling. The long frame is similar to the Western Star 6900 but with an extra axle. This truck feels like a hybrid off-road slash heavy class vehicle with its add-on options. The Paystar is a welcomed addition to the American fleet and you'll see why later, but it does have some deterrents that need to be properly managed. So before we talk about these, let's take a look at the base stats. The International Paystar 5600 TS is classified as a heavy truck. It weighs 21.2 tons. In its stock configuration, it boasts a power to weight of A-, a durability of A-, fuel consumption C+, fuel capacity is 280 liters or 74 gallons. It comes with the stock suspension. Its tires also come stock with a 43-inch highway tire. Its all-wheel drive is capable, and its diff lock is capable as well. All right, let's dive into the pros and cons of the International Paystar 5600 TS. Per usual, bad news first, so coming in at downside number one, fuel capacity and economy. To start the bad news out with a bang, our number one downside is by far the biggest deterrent for drivers, even if you're not critical on fuel consumption. The Paystar has a 280 liter, 74 gallon fuel tank, which is almost average, but its fuel economy is another story. A popular phrase I would hear upon asking other gamers their thoughts on the 5600 TS was, it's a beast if you can keep gas in it. In previous videos, I've mentioned that 6.0 gallons per minute economy basically translates to one gallon burn per 10 seconds. This vehicle can get up to eight to nine gallons per minute with ease. The bad economy is a very challenging downside to manage, especially on end game maps with long routes. To manage this, set up mobile fuel tankers, work in fuel stops, disengage all-wheel drive frequently, or use the extended fuel tank add-on. Downside number two, no high saddle. Upon looking for a truck to transport the oversized mission trailers that are on every region, drivers quickly notice that the Paystar doesn't have this add-on that almost every truck in the game has. This will eliminate the Paystar as an option to pull those massive trailers. Usually, when reviewing a heavy class truck, it's more common to see a low saddle add-on missing, so this was kind of an odd finding. In truth, I don't think this is a big deal though. The low saddle has more trailer options, and there are only a few contracts in the game that require the high saddle. Regardless, due to it not being able to equip this add-on merits its way onto the list. Downside number three, long wheelbase. Rocks and boulders, along with the fast changing terrain, seem to be more common as new phases are introduced to the game. It's nice that the vehicle has 5 axles and 10 wheels, but its frame is very long as well. The Paystar's ground clearance is respectable, but traversing those fast changing driving surfaces have the potential to high center this vehicle. For this downside, stay close to winch points and those bumpy areas to pull you through if you get caught up. Downside number 4, Balance. Later in the video, we'll discuss the upsides concerning its stability, but something I notice whenever driving this vehicle, it tends to sway to the point that you're on edge of throwing the quick winch to your side to save you from tipping. To my surprise, I actually haven't tipped this vehicle over much, but it brings about a paranoia to keep drivers on their toes. The vehicle also seems a little bit top heavy as well. If this downside bothers you too much, try adding the dually rear tire setups and perhaps drop the suspension to stock. And don't worry, you'll still be able to use the large tires without the raise kit. And finally, coming in at downside number 5, Agility. To have 5 powered axles and 10 wheels, they need a long frame to be mounted. The Paystar thankfully isn't as long as the Western Star 6900, but it's still a long vehicle. This unfortunately will limit the places that this vehicle can be utilized. Those tight, fast changing routes are not going to be ideal for this vehicle. 
It does, however, handle small areas fairly well, but just keep this one in mind when planning routes. Alright, well, those downsides didn't seem too scary, but let's get into what makes this vehicle a good choice. Here are the pros for the International Paystar 5600 TS. Coming in at upside number one, power. A common upside you probably notice is our upside number one. The Paystar shares the second largest motor in the game, which is the Westline V16 engine, which is shared with notable off-roaders. The engine is rather thirsty, but it delivers great power that the Paystar needs to push 10 wheels. Because of the vehicle's bad fuel economy, I debated on using a lesser engine, but I gotta say the V16 is the best choice for moving mass amounts of cargo, which is the main use for the 5600 TS. Upside number two, all wheel drive and diff lock. Having five axles and 10 wheels is definitely advantageous, but it's not much without the number two upside. The switchable feature is mostly an American truck quality that continues its trend, but a nice feature it is. In the Paystar's case, it can get by a lot of areas without all-wheel drive engage, which is a great way to save fuel as well. Its three rear axles give good power to move it through most things, but the added bonus of all-wheel drive definitely makes a big difference in performance. Most of the upgrades are found before discovering the vehicle, so drivers don't have to wait to use all these added benefits. Just make sure you scout the upgrades before finding the truck. Upside number three, tires. The first great feature as far as tires are concerned is the multiple variants of tire. The Paystar can use most types of tire options like the single style tires for straight mud performance or the dually tire setup for added stability. Secondly, the Paystar can equip 10 50 inch tires which help in the performance category as well. Lastly, and the best feature is the 50 inch tire upgrade does not require a race suspension option. This benefit is wonderful for drivers who want more stability but need larger wheels as well. I have to say, this is one of the best upgrades. Upside number 4, weight and grip. In addition to having all those wheels on the driving surface, they are complemented with good weight, which equals grip. The vehicle weighs 21.2 tons, which is close to some of the best off-road vehicles in the game. This upside is very important to counter the sheer power output from the engine. If the vehicle was lighter, wheel spin would plague its progress through deep spots. Although the Paystar's weight is actually middle of the pack when it comes to heavy class vehicles, it outweighs notable trucks like the Azov 73210, the Dan 96320, the Navistar, and the Western Star 6900. To close this one out, this upside along with the others add up to give us our next one on the list. Upside number 5, Off-Road Performance. The combination of prior upsides lead to the off-road performance that is quite enjoyable for drivers. The vehicle's length might be a downside in fast changing terrain and windy roads, but in mud pits, like the Western Star 6900, there seems to be a set of axles that have traction while going through that mud pit. The Paystar's frame seldomly will span the whole length of a rough area which allows either the front axles to pull it through or the back axles to push the front axles onto better terrain. Without going too much into it, the vehicle's off-road performance is very pleasing. Upside number 6, surprisingly stable. Previously, we mentioned that the vehicle tends to sway quite a bit, making drivers nervous. But with the help of Max Power and his custom testing, along with my own trials, we have found that the vehicle is surprisingly stable. Adding the dually tires and dropping the suspension will add to the stability as well. It's really odd that the vehicle with a narrow profile, slightly top heavy, and long body would be able to resist overturning. The Paystar suspension is relatively soft, which I believe attributes to its balance as well. Its rear suspension travel is also quite nice, allowing for the vehicle to resist being jarred off its wheels. With all that being said, it still has its moments and will make you nervous from time to time. And finally, coming in upside number 7, add-ons and utility. So we know it cannot use the high saddle and the maintenance repair add-on, but the Paysar has some really cool unique add-ons providing great utility. The 5600 TS can equip the logging crane and the long log attachment making it a self-sustained logging operation. It also can use the van body add-on coupled with the low saddle to fulfill multiple roles if needed. 
The vehicle's long frame allows for cargo to sit between the saddled trailer and the small crane as seen in the video, but try at your own risk. And lastly, the Pacer can equip an extended fuel tank add-on as well, or a three-slot sideboard bed trailer that can be used in conjunction with a crane and a hitch trailer. Alright, so moving on to my personal ratings for this truck. For power, I gave it a 5 because it has the second strongest engine in the game currently. For terrain navigation, a rating of 4. The vehicle handles most areas really well, but the long frame can get caught up in places. By the time you acquired this vehicle, basically you have the switchable features down, but the economy and the long frame might be challenging. For aesthetics, I love the old Paystar look, but this one I kinda like as well, so I think a rating of 4 is good. Stability is oddly above average to good, so because of this, I think a 4 is pretty generous. Due to the Paystar's poor fuel economy and average to below average size fuel tank, the vehicle's range suffers more than any I've reviewed to date. For being a heavy class truck, it has more options than most vehicles in its class, so I think it's pretty good utility. Good weight, 5 axles, 10 50 inch tires, all wheel drive and diff lock make this vehicle's grip excel above most trucks. So in conclusion, the International Paystar 5600 TS is a vehicle that seems different, yet it has so many things drivers can do with it. The phrase, it's a beast, if you can keep gas in it, is the shortest conclusion and advice for drivers who choose to brave the wilds with the 5600 TS. Ever since the Phase 3 release, I was super excited to review this vehicle and play it as well. But being a stickler about fuel, I have to say it's a hard choice for me if I don't plan ahead. Recently, I've been making it a point to use the Paystar more and it has yet to disappoint. It is a bummer that I can't test it out further due to the lack of high saddle, but really most cargo in the game is for low saddle use. The 5600 TS might not be able to get into those smaller routes like the more nimble and agile trucks in the game, but it can be used to haul massive amounts of cargo through most types of terrain. Try it out and let me know what you think. I hope this review gave you a fresh new perspective of the International Paystar 5600 TS. Please smash the like button. Definitely share this video with someone who is struggling with the game and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any future content. Hope you all have a wonderful day. God bless and stay upright.